gamma aminobutyric acid, your body's primary signal for relaxation. Why is that important? Well, we live in a world where, at least in the United States, the average American sleeps less than six hours a night. We're constantly connected to our phones, our computers, watching various TV shows and dramas until the wee hours of the morning. Since the advent of electricity, our nighttime relaxation routines have evaporated. We now have 24-7 stimulus, but that stimulus needs a little bit of recovery time. And that's where GABA comes in. Gamma aminobutyric acid is our body's primary relaxing neurotransmitter. It's also the one you probably haven't heard about. You can think of other neurotransmitters like serotonin, which largely gets associated with mood, dopamine, which gets associated with reward and focus. Those all get a lot of attention. Even glutamate, which is our body's primary excitatory neurotransmitter, gets a ton of attention in the media. But we all forget about the off switch which is GABA. And GABA works in the body in a very unique way. GABA is synthesized from glutamate. And so that goes through a process in our brain, uh, which involves cofactors like vitamin B6, magnesium, as well as an enzyme called glutamic acid decarboxylase. Now, if you're listening to this and you're wondering like, hey, why can't I relax? Part of it might be because somewhere along the lines that conversion from glutamate to GABA got, well, candidly fucked up. There's not really a great source of GABA food, to be fair. We can look for GABA in the form of supplements, but let's, let's dive a little bit into that. You can see it in your supplement shelves and you can probably buy it for a relatively inexpensive price. Problem with gamma amino butyric acid as a supplement is that the molecule is quite large, meaning that it won't cross the blood brain barrier efficiently. We know that if you're getting relief or relaxation, it's likely that you have a leaky gut or what is now trendy, a leaky brain. So what's the fix here? Well, we can look for other forms of GABA that can cross the blood-brain barrier. In Trocom, we featured something called B3 GABA. That's simply niacin bound with that GABA molecule, and it allows an efficient crossing of the blood-brain barrier. That's actually patented as a drug in Russia. What other forms of GABA cross the blood-brain barrier? You can look at GABA agonists, something like agarin. A GABA agonist actually attaches to your GABA receptor acts like GABA in the brain and induces that GABA production. If you combine that with something like a positive allosteric modulator of the GABA receptor, it makes the GABA production more efficient. So let's recap that real quick. The GABA agonist allows for natural production of GABA in the brain. But the positive allosteric modulator, think of that as like a multiplier effect. It enhances that production of GABA that's already there. Now I just hinted at something that's very important. A positive allosteric modulator will only enhance the production of GABA that's there. We live in a world that has so much external stimuli. Maybe it's your late night Netflix and chill. Maybe it's just working late like I do sometimes. But if you're not producing GABA, those positive allosteric modulators matter less. And in fact, they might have less of an effect over time, requiring you to take a higher dose of them. Why do I keep bringing up positive allosteric modulators? Well, these are common prescription medications that get sold for things like stress, anxiety, as well as sleep. You can think of zolpidem or benzodiazepines as positive allosteric modulators of the GABA receptor. And so if you have positive allosteric modulators borrowing from GABA that isn't there, of course you're going to need a larger dose over time just to get that relaxation, that sleep that you crave. In short, there's a better way to do this. Give yourself that GABA agonist, make sure that that GABA agonist crosses the blood-brain barrier, and then enhance the effect of the GABA agonist using that positive allosteric modulator. We already talked a little bit about traditional GABA supplements and why, if they're working for you, that might be more of a signal of leaky gut or leaky brain. In terms of natural GABA supplements, 
it does appear that these GAB agonists and their positive allosteric modulator components are okay to take over the long term. You'll also notice that there are common prescription drug medications, things like gabapentin, uh, which act on a different receptor, the GABA-B receptor. They can be habit-forming. But in terms of natural supplements like agarin, like L-theanine, B3 GABA, there doesn't appear to be any sort of issue with taking these supplements over the long term. So depending on the time of day, GABA can be useful for stress in the terms of bringing you down a notch or two. But at night, it can also do effectively the same thing, which is bringing you down a notch or two and allowing you to experience relaxation. GABA itself is actually not going to cause you to fall asleep. It's something that is more meant as relaxation. That's why when we look at sort of formulas like TROZ, we have uh, different molecules in there to encourage sleep induction. These include things like adenosine, cordycepin, which is a partial adenosine agonist, as well as melatonin, which helps give you that sleep pressure. In short, GABA itself during the day uh, will help you relax. So if you're a person that's stressed and who the hell isn't? Well, you might want to try GABA during the day or a form of GABA, again, that crosses the blood-brain barrier. And if GABA is taken at night, it can really help set you up for a nice relaxing night of sleep. Kava or Piper Mephisticum is one of my favorite beverages. It's actually, when I gave up alcohol, something that I introduced into my diet almost right away. It's got a long history in the Pacific Islands of being a drink that they would serve before wars when we came together to celebrate marriages, etc. And it's like a happy hour cocktail in many of the Pacific Island nations, specifically Vanuatu. And if you kind of look at what it does in the brain, well, kava itself is a positive allosteric modulator. This is why it really helps with things like anxiety. Kava itself is only gonna multiply the amount of GABA you have in the brain or multiply its effect. And so if you want to really increase that effect or uh, set another way, make it work better, make your kava drinks serve you better, get a GABA agonist that crosses the blood-brain barrier and you'll be able to really synthesize those neurotransmitters a bit better and you'll feel a little bit more enhanced relaxation. So in my early 20s, I have a confession to make. I slept between four and six hours a night. It was funny to me because at that time I was heavily influenced by hip-hop music and Nas in a song, New York State of Mind, said sleep was the cousin of death. And so I kind of, as a heavily... Uh, or easily influenced kid took that to heart and slept those four to six hours a night for over 10 years. That on top of circadian dysregulation was something that I had to unwind. I had to unlearn that desire to sleep four to six hours a night. And in that process, you discover this forgotten neurotransmitter, gamma immunobutyric acid, which when synthesized properly in the brain does help us relax. Now, we live in a society that's overstimulated, and hopefully this video has recapped some of the reasons why you might want to look into other forms of GABA, forms of GABA that cross that blood-brain barrier, how you might want to use those natural positive allosteric modulators like kava or hanakyal in order to enhance that GABA production in the brain. It's okay to just let go of the stimulus. Let your body go through its natural course and create that relaxing neurotransmitter that you need to feel refreshed the next day. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Don't Look Up, where we really encourage you to take empowered responsibility and look up everything about your health.